going to do is very quickly just introduce a couple folks. Dick here is the, uh, is the CEO and has done a fabulous job of, of making, uh, uh, making everything work very smoothly between the Silicon Valley, what we're doing from a technology perspective, and what we're doing from a, a creative perspective. So Dick, why did you uh, come and, uh, and join the Funny Art I team after a prestigious uh, career at NASCAR and ESPN? Because I thought it would all work, and, and, and you're right, I saw the opportunity to be in the middle of blending these different cultures and having the best of breed up in Palo Alto with one of our offices, with the best of breed in the production and comedy world, and Hollywood with the best of breed in the ad tech world here in New York. And, and I had some experience doing that, and uh, I thought at least it'd be fun. So, um, Chris, you're one of the founders of Funny or Die. Actually, by the way, Chris was the guy that named it uh, Funny or Die. I wanted to call it WetMyPants.com, uh, but then I'm just a VC and don't know much. Um, so, Chris, it was a good name. It was, it was a good name. It was a good start. It was a good start. We tried. So, uh, you were telling me backstage that you're the smartest guy in the room. Why is that? Because <laughs> uh, I named the website. So. Oh, no. Th there you go. No, I saw a question that I couldn't understand. Was, you know, made it seem like nobody could... Uh, Repeat the model that we came up with, which I didn't understand the question. But anyway, so you, so you're you're a writer on uh, Entourage. You've been a writer of Beast Bound and Down. Um, you uh, you just did finish the other guys. What do you think, from a creative perspective, what what is making you know folks like whether it's Pee Wee Herman or Will Ferrell or uh, you know we've had you know hundreds and hundreds of stars participate. Why why do you think they're coming out to to, to play with play with us on your die? I think it's a uh, opportunity of freedom. Uh, it's immediate. It's it's a you know with, with Dick and with Andrew the, the production values for something that we can do in a matter of a couple of days and edit uh, looks fantastic. And I think there's a, a level of trust that uh, you know we're going to come up with funny stuff. Um, but I, I do think it's it's that world of here's an idea I have. Nobody's going to interfere with it. You can do whatever you want, and we're going to put it up and we're going to feature it, and we're going to it's going to get the you know best handling ever. That we can, you know, I think it's a, it's a, that's appealing to most people. Most, what, what's been the, the, the most, the, the, when we sat around the room, we sat around the room at the, uh, at, actually it's now called the London Hotel, at that time it was called the Bell Lodge, we sat, Lodge, in, one, yeah. uh, we sat in one room, uh, Chris, it was Chris, Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, Jimmy Miller, a couple of guys, and we came up with the name of the, uh, the uh, came up with the name of the, uh, of the site, then Adam McKay says, you know, my daughter parrots everything I say, we got to do something with my daughter, and then the you know, landlord was created. What do you think, why did that that uh, video in particular just take off? I, I think purely because it was really funny, and, and uh, you know, it, it, solely based on that. It was, it was Will, who was uh, this great star and, and comedian, and then a really funny premise. It was well done, you know, over in two and a half minutes, and nobody had seen anything like that before. So. It just, it was, a, I think, a perfect fit of all these uh, factors that helped. So It was a perfect timing, you know, I think, you know, people hadn't, you know, there were viral videos, but that just was something that was a, a great opportunity of a big uh, Hollywood star doing something purely for the internet. I remember that, because it was April, it was almost about three years ago. I, I, this is the, 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 what's happening with the net as far as vi virality, and what's happened from a, from a, um, the spreading of the news. I remember on April 17th, Thursday afternoon, I sent out 10 emails. That's all, and I was the only seeder of the Funny or Die. I sent out 10 emails. By Saturday, we had a couple hundred thousand views of it. By Monday, we were, um, we were delivering 30,000 videos a second. And it just tells you what happens when one of these things take off. I remember, um, I remember seeing 900 hits on the landlord. Yeah. <laughs> so, also, by the way, when we were at the, the Bell Ash Hotel, Clearly there was a, a band or something there because the entire, I mean this might have helped with the naming and whatnot, the entire floor had it, this wafting scent of weed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, the place reeked of it. So Mr. Steele, you were the uh, you were the head writer for uh, Saturday Night Live. That's, is that a television uh, program? Uh, uh, not. <laughs> uh, you did that for 12 years, worked with some, some phenomenal folks. Why... Um, Join this this band of pirates here at, at Funny or Die. Well, honestly, I've been at SNL for a long time. I've been there for 12 years, and um, the idea of working for less money and a lot longer hours really appealed to me. <laughs> uh, no, I, 
I have to say that, uh, you know, there was an interesting moment in, in television about two years ago, and that was the writer strike. And while we were all walking around in the snow in circles here in New York City, <coughs> deciding if there was going to be TV anymore, a lot of people were talking about where TV was going. And uh, this internet stuff came up, and I, I, I tend to think that my path to the internet is going to be the path of everyone at some point. Um, uh, I sat there walking around in circles, uh, worried about uh, job security, and thought, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening over on the internet, um, and there's a lot of opportunity to do things for me as a creative person that we would have never, I would have never gotten to do, even at Saturday Night Live, which I consider to be, you know, one of the more free shows for a creative person to be at. It, it really was a, an interesting opportunity to do a lot of different things, uh, and I just couldn't pass it up. No, one thing you told me that uh, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago is it's kind of like in, in our business, venture capital business. You know, we we see a lot of companies. We decide to invest in uh, X amount of companies, but half of them don't work. Half to sixty percent of them don't work. And you were saying that's really the same thing in sketch comedy. I mean, you know, at SNL, you would see you write something. You obviously be very you know very behind it. You really liked it, and you, you threw it out there, and it didn't. What, what? What? I mean, I was just listening backstage to, to those three, three videos. You know, the audience resonated to one or two of the videos more than one of the other videos. Right. What, what, what is it that makes makes this this sort of thing happen? There, there's no no one knows. That, that, that's, that, that's the great thing about comedy is that, you know, I, I used to say at Saturday Night Live, if you were batting 300, you're a Hall of Famer. That means one out of every three sketches that you wrote, you know, uh, turned out to be funny. It's, it's really, uh, comedy is really uh, subjective and very hard. And uh, you can ask everyone in this room which one of those... Uh, sketches that we just showed are your favorites, and you'll probably get three different, you know, responses to each one. I mean, it, it really is just something you can't quantify, and that makes it kind of exciting. I mean, yes, if you've been doing it for a long time, there are certain tricks and certain things that definitely work, and, you know, the internet is a great little laboratory for that, and we're learning what works, you know, more and more each day. So going back, going back to the disrupt uh, theme, um, I think one thing that, that you're doing at Funny or Die, I remember when I, uh, and, and this is a lot of the works from, from all three of you, is I remember showing a Fox TV executive uh, a piece that we did. It was like a two-minute piece. It was the uh, Gobstopper piece with Christopher Lloyd. I showed him that. I showed him the, uh, the, the video, and I asked him how much that cost us to produce. And he said, no, I'll call it 200000 250000 And I called up Dick, and Dick said, no, it was $2,200. Um, as far as disruption, uh, Hollywood and, and the creative community has basically had huge budgets to do whatever they want to do, and sometimes they work and sometimes they didn't. But now with the internet, the fact that you know how these the, the business models are fundamentally changing. So how do you guys do great? And maybe Dick from a business perspective and Chris and Andrew from a creative perspective. How do you create really great stuff in very very small budgets? Well, let Andrew. Uh, uh, we lie to people. Um, we tell them they're going to get money and they don't. No. I, I, you know, uh, we offer something that we, we truly, and, and Chris brought it up, we offer something that no, that other companies, uh, that, that traditional media doesn't have. We don't offer money, so it's very hard for people to come in and work for us. We offer complete freedom. A person comes in and, and wants to do an idea with us. Uh, the answer is yes. And the answer is win. I mean, within the next thing line is win. So, you know, we let people make their own ideas. That's very appealing to uh, Hollywood, if you notice. Hollywood is a vain place. And people really enjoy doing their own ideas. And uh, we make that possible for them. It's a little bit based on, on how uh, you guys at SNL work, where you bring the host in and pitch them ideas. And we have uh, celebrities, actors, and comedians that have want to do something, they come in and we have a whole process of, of having writers come in and pitch ideas and we listen to their ideas and then, you know, there's usually something decided and, and then these writers go off and work on it. We have 